G'day guys, how are you? In today's video I'm going to show you how you can get a message box to show uh, using Windows Basic uh, non-visual light Windows Phone application. So to start off we're going to go to a new project and we're going to go to Windows 8 this time. And we're just going to go to blank app Windows Phone. Now an advantage of using this over the Windows Phone Silverlight application is number one, uh, Microsoft have announced that in 2020 they're going to stop supporting Silverlight and um, well that's not to say that we're going to stop supporting it for like Visual Studio is going to stop supporting it for Windows apps as I think Microsoft want as many apps in the store as possible to compete with Apple and uh, Android uh, sorry Google, Google Play um, and another advantage is if I want to um, sort of port my code to a tablet application then the Windows Phone blank um, app the new API is exactly the same in tablets um, however, if I was to um, transfer it from Silverlight to the tablet, I'd have to recode it. So that's one advantage, just porting is a bit faster using this method. So to show a message box, I'm just going to type in Windows message box 1 uh, non Silverlight. And I'm going to use a blank app. I'm going to press OK. And it's going to create my project. So just bear with it as it does that. Okay, if this is the first time you've decided that you want to try and develop something in Windows Phone, then you're going to be presented with this app XML screen. Uh, don't worry about it too much. For the basic stuff, you're not going to need it. So what we want to do is want to double click on main page. There's a few things here that are a lot different to your standard VB development, uh, sorry, desktop development. Uh, we have a package app manifest, which is we use this for when we want to um, put something on the story you have to fill out that package manifest so for example your developer ID, the unique apps ID and so on and so on pictures and icons and things for the Windows Store then we have your XAML here which if some of you know HTML then you're going to click onto this really easy for those that do not then it, you know, it might take a bit of time but um, if you want to learn it you will learn it very fast um, you won't have to worry too much about this sort of things just leave that the way it is um, but from here on downwards, uh, yeah, you can do some things. So for number one, we have background. So if I want to change this to black, um, or hang on, I'll change it to pink since it already is black, and then it goes to pink. Through what else we have? Purple, and so on. Now for the button. So I'm going to go to toolbox here, and I'm going to type in the button. Oops button, I'm just going to double click. If you know HTML you see that it has put it into, it's kind of like the body I suppose, but th this is the grid. Uh, the reason why I like XML now, I didn't really, I wasn't really flashing the idea at the start, I kind of just thought it was just more work, um, but actually it really does save a lot of time. So for example, if I had two buttons, so the X name is the button design, the content, I'm just going to write click me. If I had two buttons, I'm just going to go for my family just quickly. If I had two buttons, sorry, I could then, if I wanted the content to say click me and I wanted the family font to be Vendetta, instead of going here to properties and going to text and choosing Vendetta, I could just copy this XML code and put it into my second button. So if you had more things, so for example, to make it worth copying, if I had 25, so the button's there, and if I want my font uh, weight, maybe I want to be bald. And so on. Instead of you know going here, clicking, doing this, then going to the next button, clicking text, and maybe you've done some other things here that you could do in properties as well. You could just copy this XML code and put it into your second button. As long as the X name is not the same, uh, it will work. So that's another advantage. Now, just quickly because I'm going to show you on my phone, I'm going to go to 6 inch, 720 by 1280, just so the resolution is going to be the same as my phone. Uh, I'll show you in another video how you can make the phone screen size um, work for all devices. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to single click on the click me button and I'll urge you to get used to using the event viewer. You, you could obviously switch between the two, um, but everything you can do in these properties about the button, you can do here in the XML. So let's get to it. I'm going to double click on click. This green stuff is really nice at the start, but after a while it gets a little annoying. 
All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to import uh, windows.ui.popups. That's the first thing I want to do. The second thing I want to do is I want to go to private async sub. Don't worry about the green line. Now what I want to do is I want to declare a variable for this private sub. If you want the same uh, message to show for all um, of your subs, then you could put it into the public sub, which is, I think, just there. Public sub. It's like the public sub. You can put your things here and it'll work for all. It'll show and all. All right, so dim message one as new uh, message dialog. And I'm just going to put here hello Shiba since my computer's Shiba. Although I will be running it on my um, on my um, phone anyways. So the message dialog, sorry, is going to equal hello to Shiba. If you want a title for it, just do a comma, and you can put your title here. So I just write information. Or if you did have a string, so dim title as string equals information. You can delete this and just put your title, and that will be the title of it. And now what we're going to do is after you've done your command, so whether it's what we're doing right now is after we click the button, so message await message one dot show a sync, and that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. Of course, if you want this to look a bit needed, you could put these dim and stuff and put it here in the public sub, but then you must remember that this message one is for everything. So if you had another message, you would then have to change it to message two and type in what you wanted. However, if you've just got the dim in this private sub here, you could have message one for another one and it will equal to that sub's dim, if that makes sense. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run mine on my device. I'm just going to deploy it. Okay, once it's deployed, uh, it's going to load the symbols just down here. It always takes the longest the first time when I'm doing it on a phone. Though this is quicker than using an emulator. Okay, so this is my telephone. On my screen I can see it. It says click me. So what am I going to do? I'm going to click it. And it will pop up in a second with a message box. Like I said, doing it the first time always takes the longest. But after you're not debugging and you're kind of running it as a install, then it's much faster. So there we go. Hello to Shiba. Click me. Hello to Shiba. And so on. If I wanted it to um, put another string in there. So I could just run here, dim message uh, message as string equals um, hello, uh, hello, um, hello Nokia. <laughs> I could then put in here message. So now if I run my, run my device again. You will see that it will be faster the second time around. So click on me, hello Nokia, information, and there we go. So guys, that's how you get a message to, um, message box to show on the new Windows runtime using Visual Basic. Uh, if you'd like more of these videos, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.